Chris. Hey Gavin, um, well done on your appearances so far. You've sort of settled in really well, look calm and, and relaxed. How, how much have you enjoyed it? Yeah, thanks very much. I've, I've loved every moment of it. Uh, I mean, with every cap I'm getting, I'm growing a bit in confidence. I'm really feel, feeling comfortable. Um, great group of lads here, so they've all been brilliant, welcoming me in and making me feel comfortable. Um, and I've been happy with the performances, and it was great to get a win. Does it feel like a big step up for you? Um, not really. It feels just... I, I mean, the first game against Luxembourg, I was just nervous before the game, but as soon as the the whistle went to start the game, it was just like any other game and I just felt comfortable and I made sure to stick to uh, my my little keys that I have, just, just to be loud, to be brave, um, communicate. And once I have those things, um, it just feels like any other game. And in terms of your sort of long-term goals, obviously you're a really young lad at the moment, but ultimately do you hope to one day be the Manchester City goalkeeper? Yeah, of course. Uh, that's that's my that's one hundred percent my aim. I wouldn't have gone to Manchester City uh, unless I thought I could be the number one goalkeeper. And every day, that's what I work towards. That's the goal. And, and uh, do you interact? I know you were on loan last year, but do you interact with it, uh, Edison at all, or Pep Guardiola at any stages during the season? Uh, I speak to Xavi, who's the goalkeeper coach there. Uh, I spoke to him today actually um, but yeah I like to keep in contact with him during the season uh, I'd speak to him once or twice a week and we'd go over uh, the clips from the previous matches um, and he'd be able to give me an insight onto what he thinks I can improve on uh, initially the plan was that I'd be able to go in and train with them maybe once once twice a week but because of Covid and all the restrictions uh, that wasn't possible so the hope is next season, even if you're on loan somewhere else, that you might pop into the, the, the training ground and then train with City? Uh, yeah, possibly. I suppose it depends where I'll be on loan. Um, I'm not too sure of any of that myself, so I'll just have to see what comes about. Thanks very much for your time. Thank you. Magdara? Hi, Gavin. Just uh, reflecting on the, the last season, um, you know, you played over 30 games for... Rochdale, you three international caps. Um, just how do you reflect on, on, on the year? Uh, for me, I feel like it was a hugely successful year. Uh, I got a lot of game time, a lot of experience. Um, I mean, that was the whole plan for the loan. It was a really difficult season, but I feel like it couldn't have been a better loan for myself. Um, I got loads of uh, exposure to first-team football, and I suppose that game time was what uh, was able to get me into this squad. Um, so I'm very thankful for that. And we saw you back at Shamrock Rovers up in Roadstone and you, you travelled with the team up to, to Oriel Park. You were catching up with some of your former teammates. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Um, struggled a lot being away. Wasn't able to get home at all really throughout the whole season. Um, but still managed to watch all the games on Watch LOI. So uh, I was delighted to come back and see all the lads and uh, see the manager and everything like that. Cause Still, still the team I support, so I still enjoy being around them. Thanks, Carl. Thank you. Uh, Gavin Cooney, please. Hi, Gavin. Uh, just to build on, on what Guy was talking about there, are you expecting to go out on loan again next season, or are you going to stick around City? Uh, yeah, my, my plan would be that I'd like to go out on loan, and I've spoken to, to Xavi, and he's on the same page. So at the moment, we're just trying to get the, the ball rolling, really. Um, I've not really got too much information myself as to where I'll be going. Uh, I suppose we'll be planning that over the next couple of weeks. Do you think it'll be a higher level in England, or could it be somewhere in Europe? Uh, I'm not too sure. I'm open to, to anywhere. Whichever club uh, suits best for me, uh, I'm open. Yeah, and just lastly for me, I mean, and you mentioned this as well, I think we, we all noticed it in your debut against Luxembourg. We could hear people on the pitch, and, and you were obviously the loudest by a country mile. Where do you get that confidence from to, to come in as a teenager on your, on your senior international debut and start barking orders? Uh, I suppose most of it comes probably from the fact that I've been training um, at a first team level from such a young age. Um, I was in training with the Shamrock Rovers first team from the age of 14 um, and would have trained with them up through to 16. So being around a men's first team dressing room um, for that period probably just gave me the confidence and just the understanding of uh, how to speak to your teammates and what's needed from a goalkeeper and like 
you say what 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 confidence do I need to be able to bark out orders but at the same time I understand that the experienced players and the older players in the team that's what they want from a goalkeeper whether you're young or old they just want to know that there's someone behind them who has the confidence to be able to tell them where to be and when to be. Thanks for that guy. Damien Spalman please. Hi Gavin. Gavin, it's, it's unusual for a goalkeeper to make an international debut at, at 19. Have you felt the pressure of that? Um, no, not at all. Uh, I've just, I was nervous before the first game, but I didn't feel any pressure. Um, obviously, I wanted to do well for myself and the team. Um, but at the end of the day, I'm just out there just doing my job. It's like in any any other game for me. Um, and I just go out there and try to enjoy it as much as I can. You famously, one of your predecessors, Shea Given, also made his first appearance at 19. That would be, there would be some uh, footsteps to follow in. Yeah, one hundred percent. Um, growing up, uh, Shay and Darren would have been, uh, my my massive idols. Watching them playing for Ireland, and uh, that's that's my goal to try and follow in their footsteps, as you said. Thank you. Good luck. Thank Dan you. McDonald. Hey, Gavin. How are things? Um, Gavin Brian Brian Murphy, like he said recently in an interview, and I think um, he might have actually repeated this a couple of times, but he felt after the last international break that you needed a bit of a breather. I mean, was that, and hence, that's why you didn't play in, in the run-in. Like, was that something you felt yourself? Was your sort of, you know, had, had the exertions of those 30-plus games sort of taken their toll? Um, I mean, it was my first um, experience of playing first-team football, um, and I had been playing a lot of games up to then, and I can understand... Uh, Brian did come and speak to me and he did mention how he wanted to give me a rest and um, to be fair working with Jay Lynch who was the other goalkeeper he'd been brilliant all season with me and um, Brian came and spoke to me and spoke to him and said that he felt he deserved the chance to get some game time after sitting out for so long uh, and I completely understood that. I appreciate you had your experience with Rovers a couple of years ago before you went away but how different was the experience of being in a dressing room, battling to stay in the division, a lot of older pros who were probably you know, worried about the implications of that. How different is football at that level compared to under-23 or under-18 football that you might have experienced in City prior to that? Yeah, like you said, I would have been exposed to that a lot when I was at Rovers and it was a very similar uh, environment in terms of having a lot of older players and um, the level that we're playing at. Uh, but at the end of the day, everyone's goal is the same, is just to go out and win the match. Uh, and I try, tried not to really think about the, the outside pressures and just concentrate on the one goal, which was to, to win the game. Just finally for me, you mentioned you would speak to the goalkeeper and coach at City about the next step, but are there other people involved in that process? I don't know, someone like Fergal Harkin, who's obviously involved in the loan department at City. I don't know your agent. Like, is it a broader discussion about where you go next year? Like, what's the what's the next natural step with you? Because as you mentioned, like City have a lot of players in Europe. I think one of the other questions referenced Europe. I mean, is it a, a big group discussion about where you go from here? Uh, I suppose yeah. It's between the decision. Like you mentioned, the group will probably be between myself, uh, Xavi, Fergal, and my agent. Yeah. Um, and I I have a lot of trust in them, and I just let them work in the background. And they just come to me whenever um, they've had their meetings or whenever they have something on the table. Um, and like I said before, I'm, I'm open uh, to going anywhere, which will uh, help me, uh, help aid my progression as a footballer. Thanks, Gavin. Thank Gavin, you. please. Uh, Gavin, hello, how are you? <clears throat> um, just, um, were, you, were you surprised about how much um, fake Stephen Kenny's shown in you? To go with you again now and for a couple of matches now? Um, I'm not going to say I was really surprised. Um, I felt like I performed really well in training and I performed really well in the other games. Um, but I'm definitely, I'm really thankful and grateful for the, the confidence that he's shown in me. Um, and all I can do is go out there and perform uh, as best as I can and to the highest level that I can and just continue to show that um, I'm reliable and I can perform. Manchester City don't sign someone who can't distribute or play football, but how important is that part of your game? It, it applies to Ireland as well. That you can almost start the attack. Yeah, one hundred percent. It's um, it's definitely the new era of goalkeeping. Goalkeepers being able to play with their feet and to be able to be comfortable playing from the back and have the tactical knowledge to know when and where to play. 
Um, so that is definitely a massive strength in my game and I hope to keep building on it. Right, thanks. Thank you. Dave Kelly. Hi, Gavin, how are you? Hi, how are you? Good, good. Just um, following on from the last points, just in terms of Stephen Kenny, I wonder, has anything been said to you in terms of a pecking order? Obviously, Darren Randolph isn't involved um, in, in this group of players, but has anything been said in regard to that? Or where do you feel you now are in that goalkeeping pecking order? Um, no, nothing's really been said. Uh, like I mentioned before, I'm just coming in, uh, training as hard as I can and... Um, put myself in the manager's eye to to be able to available to get into the, the team to play. Um the group, Dean Kylie, Mark and Quevian has been brilliant to work in. It's a really good environment. Um and I think we all push each other on to be as good as we can be. And you mentioned Quevian there. Would you have any advice for him in terms of potentially getting out next season and getting more games because obviously like you he's at a big club I know he has played some games for Liverpool but it's obviously going to be very difficult for him to get at regular game time with Alisson there uh, I mean like the decision's not up to me but from in my personal opinion yeah it was a brilliant experience for me to get out and get so many games um, especially like I said at Rochdale uh, I had a lot of situations where like there was games where I was having to make a lot of saves or uh, had a lot of the ball and I feel like every every game I improved a lot or had a lot to learn and um, yeah so my opinion is just that game time is, is very important yeah Thank you Thank And you. we'll end uh, with Philip Quinn Thank you Kieran. Gavin what was your take on the Andorra goal? Was there an inquest into the, how it came about? Um, no not really Um. I suppose we were focusing a lot on the good things we did in the game. Obviously, it was disappointing to concede. Um, it was yeah, like I said, it, it it shouldn't have really happened. But we had a lot of good things in the game, and that's what we focused on. Because if we can keep doing that, well, then we have a really good chance to improve as a team. You you didn't think uh, in your own situation you were happy with your own positioning and all that it was more it looked like the defenders didn't pick up. Uh, I mean, there's, there's there's different things you can change, I suppose. If I had a deeper position, I might have had more of a chance to save a goal. But um, my opinion on it is that I'm going to try and be as aggressive as possible um, to stop any potential cross. Like there was another cross I came out for in the game and I don't think I would have been able to come for it if I wasn't as aggressive. So um, I'm definitely going to learn from it. And I suppose the other lads will also look back at it and see what they can improve on. But there was a lot of positives to take from the game. Final one for me, please. Just uh, Dean Cody has come in as goalkeeping coach. How have you found working with him, and what are his strengths? Dean's been brilliant. Yeah, um, I think his biggest strength is how uh, he's set up like this goalkeeping bubble between myself, Quivin, and Mark and Kieran O'Hara when he was in previously, and how much uh, we're able to support each other. So, depending on who's playing, the other two and Dean are there to to push them along and give them whatever they need to be ready for the game. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, very much. guys. Thank you very.